It's a Tuesday, March 15th, and it's time for your body list to be morning news update. Fair and balance. That's how the local business sector has described the government's budget delivered in Parliament on Monday by Prime Minister Mia Motley. President of the Barbados Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Anthony Branca, said the measures addressed many of the sectors of the economy. Emmanuel Joseph has more on the BCCI's reaction as well as others in this report. The Chamber of Commerce president was particularly impressed by the Prime Minister's renewable energy proposal that would allow all Barbadians to benefit. The whole prospect of the renewable energy sector and uh, every Barbadian being able to benefit from uh, you know, the, the, the prospects of what the renewable energy sector has for individuals and the economy. However, the Chamber of Commerce president did not think that the challenges which investors and other business people experience in transacting business in Barbados were adequately dealt with in the budget. The ease of doing business with government, I know she spoke about digitization, but the ease of doing business um, across the you know, with the public sector is an area that they would have wanted to hear a little more about. The Democratic Labour Party, while supporting the government's proposal for the renewable energy sector, has otherwise poured scorn on the budgetary measures in general. Third Vice President Ryan Walters said the DLP sees the use of renewable energy as a major vehicle for economic democracy and diversification in Barbados and is pleased that the Miamali administration has finally and enthusiastically embraced the renewable energy revolution, which he said was a cornerstone of the DLP's economic policy between 2008 and 2018. The DLP spokesman suggested that the government continues to speak futuristically where the country has to contend with the present-day reality of taxation, borrowing and spending. And the privately owned public service vehicle sector, which is said to have some 2,500 taxis and 800 PSVs, welcomed the proposed reduction in fuel prices at the pump. There's a welcoming news for the, the PSV industry as well as the taxi fraternity and that uh, we were happy that the government uh, were able to reduce the fuel cost by 14 cents and as uh, they said we welcome that and we're hoping though to as an industry to capitalize on the 10 percent um, import duties that government would put on to the electric vehicles that was Chairman of the Alliance Owners of Public Transport, Roy Raphael, and I'm Emmanuel Joseph for Barbados Today. In Monday's budget presentation, Prime Minister Mia Motley announced that farmers will get water at a discounted rate from May 1st. The farmers registered with the Ministry of Agriculture will access water at a standard rate of $1.80 per cubic meter, the equivalent of 220 gallons. The truth is that there are some farmers who have been paying less, not many, not the majority, but they pay as a result of accessing water from BADMC when it is available. But equally, it is not always available. And regrettably, there has been a buildup of arrears on that scheme, even though the rate at that scheme has been 66 cents for 220 gallons of water, and that that rate has been in place from the early 1970s. Mr. Speaker, that is unsustainable. We believe that the rate of $1.80 is absolutely affordable when we consider that the household rate for the first eight cubic meters is $2.48 per cubic meter. Meantime, value-added tax on selected essential personal and critical care items will be zero-rated from April 1st. Prime Minister Motley said measures will be taken to ensure those savings are passed on to consumers. She said all sanitary towels and tampons, baby and adult diapers, antiperspirants, vitamins and multiminerals will be zero-rated for VAT purposes, along with 35 items used primarily to assist with the control of chronic diabetes. This is a long overdue measure that I'm proud to introduce and another component of protecting our people, shielding our people from the cost of living increases. But Mr. Speaker, health and wellness is also extremely important as we know. 
And the pandemic has emphasized why it is critical to deal with chronic non-communicable diseases in our country, what we have come to call in the pandemic comorbidities. To assist in this fight, therefore, I propose to go further than where the manifesto went and to zero rate a selected list of items which are used primarily to assist with the control of chronic diabetes, but also to provide meal supplements to people who are suffering badly. What are we talking about? Glucerna, Ensure, Entrax, and some, I think there was one called Peter Shore too. All of them are listed in Appendix E of the budgetary statement, and therefore you will be able to see those areas that we believe that families need a ease on because when somebody in the house is sick that is humbugging your head enough and you don't really have to compound it with how you're going to find the money to buy what they need to keep them stable in their period of illness. To ensure the tax relief measures are passed on to the consumer, the Prime Minister said that the Department of Commerce will ensure the movement of prices will be published every two weeks for the benefit of the public. So that all Barbadians may see what prices are out there and Barbadians can vote with their feet and their pocket where they need to go. I have similarly asked that monthly reports be prepared for submission to the cabinet and through the Minister of Labour to the social partnership so as to ensure that the sacrifice being borne by the taxpayers that I've announced today genuinely reaches the pockets of Barbadians where we need them to reach and are not used as part and parcel of the profit to be incurred by persons selling these products. My intent, sir, is to ensure that the reduction in prices is genuinely passed through to consumers. Mr. Speaker, we give faithful commitment that we shall continue to monitor these critical price trends in oil, in freight, in food, in personal care items, with a view to considering how we can continue to improve the effectiveness, effectiveness of the shield according, and in accordance, I should say, with the depth of our pockets. There's regional and international news after this short break. New Brunswick sardine fillets, boneless, ready to eat. Perfect, son. Hold on, hold on, one more. It is sardine. Well, let's see. And available in bold new flavors. Brunswick sardine fillets are giving sardines a new vibe. More oxygen means more energy, means more adventure. Cure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. To news from other region, health officials in St. Lucia are urging residents not to let down their guards when it comes to COVID-19 as the country records a decrease in the number of patients at the respiratory hospital. More from DBS News. On Sunday, St. Lucia recorded the lowest number of COVID-19 patients at the respiratory hospital since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic here in March 2020. There were only three patients at the facility. But President of the St. Lucia Medical and Dental Association, Dr. Merle Clark, says this is no reason for complacency. It's not a reason at all to let down our guards. It is certainly good news. It takes some of the stress, some of the strain of healthcare providers. Um, some of our Cuban colleagues who have been with us really from the start will get an opportunity to see their families. Um, some of our members, of course, will get an opportunity to get those long delayed vacations. So that is important because burnout and the impact on mental health has been a key factor during this pandemic. Dr. Clark also sought to dispel the notion that the war between Ukraine and Russia has ended the pandemic. The reality, she says, is that it is still a threat. There's a lot of talk on social media that the war has ended COVID-19, that the theories, um, that all the conspiracy theories that if it's one thing and there's no talk on the media of COVID-19, well, that's the media. 
the reality is we the physicians on the ground we the science-based practitioners understand that it's still a real threat and finally on the international front this war goes far beyond ukraine it is also an assault on the world's most vulnerable people and countries. That's according to the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres, who says Ukraine is being decimated before the eyes of the world. The impact on civilians is reaching terrifying proportions. Countless innocent people, including women and children, have been killed. After being hit by Russian forces, roads, airports and schools lie in ruins. According to the World Health Organization, at least 24 health facilities have suffered attacks. And with each passing hour, two things are increasingly clear. First, it kept getting worse. Second, whatever the outcome, this war will have no winners only losers. This war goes far beyond Ukraine. It is also an assault on the world's most vulnerable people and countries. While war reigns over Ukraine, a sword of Damocles hangs over the global economy, especially in the developing world. Even before the conflict, developing countries were struggling to recover from the pandemic with record inflation, rising interest rates, and looming debt burdens. Their ability to respond has been erased by exponential increases in the cost of financing. Now, their breadbasket is being bombed. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.